years? Gee. Isn't it outrageous? It certainly is. Where will it end? That's exactly it. Where will it end? Two dollars a pair. What are you talking about? Nylon, that lingerie ad. Isn't that what you were reading, dear? I was reading the editorial page. Oh. As for lingerie, this keeps up. Hmm? How much does it say those silk nightgowns are? Jim, please. I told you I'm trying to read the editorial page. Oh. We're heading straight for chaos. Then you are reading the lingerie ad. Jim, once and for all, I am reading an editorial. Oh. Do you realize that 75% of the wealth of this country is in the hands of women? Is it, dear? That's nice. Nice? It's an extremely dangerous situation. 75% of our wealth in women's hands. The percentage has doubled in the last 20 years. Do you realize what that can mean 20 years from now? We'll run out of women. What did you say? We'll run out of women. June. Have you been listening to one word I said? Of course. You said 75% and in 20 years it doubles. That's 150%. But 100% of anything is all you can have, so we'll run out of women. That is unquestionably the most ridiculous thing anybody ever said. I don't see anything wrong with it. If you can only have 100% and there's going to be 150%, but then you... Never mind. That is the exact danger of the situation. If women get control of this country, do you know what that will mean? The price of nylons will go down. June, don't you ever think of anything else besides your clothes? Stuart! Well, it's a crime. Here I am, a high school principal. I try to guide the thinking of the young people. I teach a night class in civics for adults. But when I try to discuss a serious problem with my own wife... That's enough, dear. Don't you ever listen to me at all? I said that's enough. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I lost my temper. We won't discuss it. Oh. Well, I... I'd better stop off at the drugstore on my way to class. I, I need some tobacco. Well, I guess I'd better get started if I'm going to get that tobacco. Well, no. huh? get the tobacco. I'm sorry, it slipped. I just thought, to, while I'm at the drugstore getting the tobacco, would you like a box of candy? No, thank you. I've given up candy. Oh. Well, see you later. Hello, June. Did you see that ad? Prices like those may have the nerve to advertise. Yes, it's terrible, isn't it? Adele, I'm going back to school. Oh? If women have 75% of the money, we'd better learn how to run the country. Who says we have 75% of the money? It's in the paper. I'm going to call Miss Clark and enroll in Stewart's civics class. Good, I thought you would. I'll call her and enroll for both of us. Why don't we start tonight? That's a good idea. Harry's going to address the class. I won't tell him we're going to be there. All right, then. I'll see you in ten minutes. Goodbye. Mother, could I have 50 cents? I spent my allowance, but I'll pay it back honestly. Nancy and Ruth thought we'd go downtown for a soda. Please, Mother? No, dear. You can't go out anyhow. You have to stay home with Jackie. But I thought you were staying home. No, I'm going out. Where are you going, Mom? I'm going back to school. Mother! How on earth can you? What would people think? I never heard of such a thing. Come on, Joyce. I want you to help me with my arithmetic. Oh, you're not serious about this, Mother. Come on, Joyce. Oh, my friends say when they find that my very own mother is... Joyce, you heard your sister ask for help. Oh, this is awful. She didn't mean anything by it, Mom. She just didn't think. She's at that stage. Nothing on her mind but boys. <sighs>
Nervous? Mm-hmm. You? I wonder if this was such a good idea. <laughs> Excuse me, I couldn't help overhearing. Don't be nervous. Mr. Average is a very patient and gentle man. Is he indeed? Oh, very. Even with Mr. Masala. Terrible temper, Mr. Masala. Sicilian. and yours. They're in there. Oh, probably just came down to listen to me address the class. You think that's it? Sure. What else? Oh, yeah, sure. They just came down to listen. Yeah. Of course, that's it. I hope. I'll call them. Good evening, class. Good evening. Good evening, good evening sir. And a good evening to our two distinguished visitors. seem to have made a mistake. We have two new pupils, not visitors. Mrs. Johnson. And my wife, Mrs. Irwin. You are the one not telling me. We will open with our customary question period on last week's lesson. If you remember, we took up forms of government. What is the exact difference between a democracy and a republic, Mr. Yang? A democracy is a form of government in which the citizens, in assembly, vote directly on the issues. A republic is a form of government in which the elected representatives of the people decide the issues. How about men? But he takes courses in everything anyway. Very learned. And does he do a laundry? Oh, look at Mr. Samuel's shirt, for instance. Only 16 cents if you bring it there yourself. <laughs> now, if an official of a republic such as ours is guilty of improper behavior, what action can the citizens take? Mr. Marsal. Officials guilty of bad things? Yeah. What officials? Who oh, any officials, say the mayor? Oh, the mayor! That's an easy one. If he done a bad thing, you wait till the dark night. And then? <laughs> <laughs> no, Mr. Marcella, I'm afraid things aren't done that way. <laughs> what do you mean, Dent? My grandfather was a mayor in Sicily. A carriage at his funeral. That must have been a long time ago. I'll repeat the question. If an official is guilty of improper action, what action can the citizens take? Yes, Ms. Irwin? If an official of the government is unworthy, the action a citizen can take is to impoach him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean to impoach... <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, Mr. Yang, in the case of malfeasance or nonfeasance on the part of an official, the citizens can impeach the said official. Now, the word impeach is a very interesting one. It comes to us from the old French, empêché, and is there derived from the later Latin, pedicari, meaning to fetter, which, in turn, is derived from the Latin pedis, meaning foot. Thank you. Such a smart Alec. I think I'll buy a washing machine. Perhaps tonight we'd better dispense with the question period. I'm sure you're all as eager as I am to hear our good friend and esteemed fellow citizen, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson will address us on banking and good government. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Irwin, fellow citizens. The bank in your community is not a repository for your money. It is an important part in your community life. Your bank is interested in every phase of your welfare. Eight times. I've heard that speech eight times, and I had to come way down here for its ninth rendition. If you're in trouble, whether it's financial or legal, or whatever it is, you won't go far wrong to consult your banker. <laughs> he even said that to the Boy Scouts. <laughs> we won't give you legal advice, but we can tell you who can be relied on to give it. 
After all, we don't want to poach on the lawyer's preserves. Or as our friend might say, uh, peach on the lawyer's preserves. <laughs> you idiot. You benighted idiot. Don't mind him, honey. He's a clown. Even his own mother warned me, but I wouldn't listen to her. Well, uh, uh, good night, uh, uh, one and all. I... Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Father. Good morning, Father. Good morning, dear. Good morning. Thank you, Mother. How do you want your eggs? Oh, any way at all. You know me, not particular. But how do you want them? Whichever is easiest. Stuart, you're going to have to tell me how you want your eggs. Any way at all. Peached. I mean, poached, uh, scrambled, uh, fried. I don't want any eggs. You always eat eggs. Oh. All right, then. I'll have them scrambled. That's it. Scrambled. Say, the lingerie shop has a big ad this morning. I hadn't noticed. Excuse me, Father. No, me too. But girls, you haven't finished your breakfast. I'm not very hungry, Mother. Neither am I. Please, may we go? Well, all right. Will you promise to eat a big lunch? Yeah, all right. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, dear. Bye, Mom. Bye, darling. So long, Dad. Oh, bye. Bye, Pa. Bye. Poor dears, they're upset. June, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. I don't think so. What did I do? Don't raise your voice. What did I do? You shouldn't have called on me in front of all those people. You lifted your hand. It was my first night in class. You know I was nervous. You know I knew the answer. You knew the answer. You just got flustered. Well, you should have known I'd get flustered. How in the world could I possibly know you'd get up there and say... Poached. Thank you. I gave the girls money for their lunch. Would you mind eating downtown today? Not at all. I'll eat with Harry. You going out? No, I'll be home all day. Studying. We'll return to the Irwins in just a moment. Back to the Irwins. Oh. Evening, sir. Evening, Harry. I feel all right, I guess. You? All right, I guess. I was just coming over to pay you a visit. Well, I saved your trip. Yes, you did. Stu, you wouldn't happen to have some leftovers from dinner in the house? That's what I was coming over to ask you. Oh, we had a can of cold salmon. Kids ate early. We had sardines. How did this all start? Search me, but it seems it started over a discussion of an editorial about the holding of the wealth. <laughs> Shouldn't be any trouble about that. That's what I thought. Just like the time when I tried to explain to Adele about filling out the income tax form. Yes, but you could get a bite over here that week. Now we're both in it. Oh, well, I guess it'll soon all blow over. No, it's going to get worse. Why? There's an examination next Tuesday. A review of the term's work. Wonderful, wonderful. Just as soon as they pass, they'll give up the course and... They'll never pass. What do you mean they'll never pass? How can they make up a whole year's work in one week? They'll get the two lowest grades in the class. But who grades the papers? I do. Well. Oh, no, Harry. I couldn't do that. Oh, oh now. Stu, old pal, I know it's asking Suppose a Suppose they ask you to change their deposit slips in your bank. That's different. Now, it is teaching as my profession. You're nothing but a stuffed shirt. Stuffed what? A stuffed shirt. A shirt. A stuffed shirt. Oh, now, don't get sore. I'm not sore. Good night, Harry. Good night. Good night.
of your favorite symphonies, dear. The noise makes it very hard to concentrate. Bedtime, girl. Good night, Daddy. Good night. Good night, Mom. Good night, Mama. Good night. Good night, Pop. You are fighting it, dear. There's the right way to study and the wrong way. If you fight it, you won't absorb it. I think I have intelligence enough to read a printed word. I didn't say that you didn't, but there's an act to studying, and you aren't going to be able to remember a single word you're reading. If other people can remember it, I'm certainly not too stupid to. This has to stop. Stuart! Now, never mind the Stuarts. I'm only trying to help you, and all I get out of it is pins stuck into me. Well... Oh, I don't mind your taking the civics course. I like it. But when it means that the whole household is going to pieces, then... I simply haven't time to cook meals and study, too. I'm not referring to that. As a matter of fact, I think these light meals are helpful. You do? It's this shirt that I'm talking about. Look at that. That's the way I went around all day. But the laundry never sent a shirt back looking like that. But did you inspect it? No. Supermarkets, super laundries. Why, my mother would have been covered with shame if she'd have sent my father out in a shirt like this. But I'm sure that... Good night. <laughs> Because Jackie can't sleep with it on. You have your own room next year. Have you finished your homework? Yes, Mother. So soon? Lessons are easy this year. They don't take much time. Lessons are easy? Sure. Miss Carstairs has shown us a wonderful way to study. Jackie, I want you to come straight home from school tomorrow. But, Mother, I thought... You do this for me, and I'll do something nice for you. All right, Mother. Good night, darling. Good night, Mom. Good night, Mother. Good night, dear. No, 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 no! The Vice President presides over the Senate, but votes only in case of a tie. That doesn't seem like very much to do. And the salary he gets. Ladies, please. What is the difference between a senator and a representative? Well, uh, there are two representatives from each state. Wrong. Mrs. Irwin? Well, a representative... Come in. Good afternoon, Mrs. Irwin. Uh, Mr. Irwin said you wanted me to come around to pick up the laundry. I did? Oh, I guess I did. I'll bring it right down. Thank you. Uh, studying? Yes, we were. I would be honored if you would allow me to help. Well, uh... You see, there are many little tricks of memory that make it all much easier. We were just trying to clear up the difference between a representative and a senator. Possibly the uh, difficulty lies in the beginning. Uh, the word representative may help you. Uh, there are two senators from each state. They represent the geographic sections. But as you undoubtedly know, the representatives are allocated by the results of the census. Therefore, they represent the people themselves. Why, I never thought of it that way. Of course. It's easy. And so, therefore, the leader of the majority party is... is the Speaker of the House. If I may say so, Mrs. Irwin, <laughs> your grasp of these matters is magnificent. Thank you. <laughs> After you've taken as many courses as I have, uh, you get to understand just how a teacher's mind works. You do? Yes. For example, you can usually guess just what questions he will ask during an examination. You mean that you can actually guess what questions Mr. Irwin's going to ask? I think so. Uh, won't you sit down, Mr. Yang? Uh, yes, sit right down, Mr. Gladly. Yang. Wait a minute. Is Mr. Yang going to conduct my class? Darling, wouldn't you rather go out and play? I consider this very unethical, sir. <laughs> Evening. Evening, Harry. Can you come out? Yeah. I uh, 
Sneaked a couple of hamburgers in the house. I thought you might like one. Oh, gee, thanks. I'm sorry about uh, calling you a stuffed shirt. Oh, that's all right. It gave me an idea. Well, I hope so. We had sardines tonight. Figured you would. We had the cold salmon. When's it going to end? The end, my boy, is in plain sight. I'll hold the class a half hour later next week while I mark the examination papers. I was thinking about that, and I'm sorry about what I asked you to do. No harm done, as long as I don't do it, is there? Oh, no, no harm, but I wouldn't want you to feel that I would... You mean you're not going to cheat on the papers? No, I, I thought I explained that to you. You double-crosser! Take it easy, lad. That's the trouble with all you school teachers. You're impractical. You're just a pack of... Good night, Harry. Good night. Thanks for the hamburger. Exasperating. You can get a divorce in most states for less than this. The suspense is killing me. I suppose you're all anxious to hear the results of the examination. Well, I won't torture you any longer. It seems that we have a tie for first place. Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. Irwin have marks of 100%. Good <laughs> Yang is third with a mark of 90%. This is the first time this year that you've had less than 100, Mr. Yang. I am covered with shame. Uh, such an easy question you missed on, too. Odd, isn't it? The ways of the world are strange. Mrs. Johnson and I are sorry to say we must give up the class because of other duties. But we would jointly like to invite all of you to dinner this coming Sunday. Oh, yeah. oh hello, Harry. <laughs> new shirt? No, new laundry. Lin Yang? Yeah. <laughs> We're using him, too. <laughs> Boy, that turkey smells good. I don't know how I'll be able to eat another bite after that noonday meal that Dell cooked for me. <laughs> He'll make it all right, too. I know you didn't cheat, but how in the world did our wives manage to answer all ten questions correctly? Hmm. Huh? Well, I'll tell you, Harry. In my years as a teacher, I've learned that certain students who have taken enough courses under you know how your mind works. Just by paying sharp attention to stresses when you lecture, they can predict the questions you'll give them in an examination. Lin Yang. Lin Yang. Hmm. <laughs> that looks about done. I think another two minutes. Mrs. Irwin, I have a favor to ask. Yes? When I first came to town, I was undecided whether to start a restaurant or a laundry. Someday I will have both. A lobster Cantonese, I know how to cook perfectly. Mandarin duck with almonds is simple. But please, would you teach me how to roast a turkey? I'd be glad to, Mr. Yang. Thank you. Allow me. Oh, thank you. All right, everybody. Dinner is ready. Oh, oh. Mr. Marsala, you sit here. Thank Mrs. You. Samuels, you sit around thank here you. in the third chair. Uh, Mrs. Watson, you sit down there in the far chair. Mr. Samuels, you sit next to Mrs. Watson. Mr. Schallenbach, you sit right down there at the end. Harry, you're here. Mr. Spade, you sit right there. That's fine. Oh, here it is. Oh, beautiful. It's beautiful. Joe, as a consolation prize for being the lowest in the examination, you get the car. Sure. <laughs> Joey Carver, beautiful. There you are. No, 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 no. No. This one. <laughs> My grandfather, the mayor, always told the bambinos, when you carve at your table, you forget your sorrow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but before I carve, just a minute. Nome del padre, figliolo, spirito, santo, così sia. Gesù Cristo mio, ti ringraziamo di averci fatto vedere un'altra serata. Amen. Now! We start to hit right here. <laughs>